Hello there, thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Heather, I'm a songbird stamper and I'm here today to show you how I made this cute little chocolate easel box. Um, so it folds up flat, it looks beautiful, I've used the sweet as a peach to sweet from Stampin' Up here um, and it folds up beautifully into an easel card just keeping uh, upright there using this loop strip but then the box opens up as well and you can put in a chocolate bar so it's a lovely little thank you gift or a birthday gift for somebody um, all quite neat and compact and um, doubles up as a gift and a card in one so I thought I would show you how I made that today so I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and um, so all the products that I use here today can be purchased through me um, card, trimmers, papers, everything you see so if you'd like to know more, please do get in touch or the link to my shop is down below. So I started with a piece of 12 inch by 12 inch card. Um, you're going to need that for this project. And then what I've got is my trimmer, my stamping trimmer. And I've cut this piece of card down to 9 and 3 quarter inches by 9 and 1 8 of an inch. So that's 9 and 3 quarters by 9 and 1 8 of an inch. Now I'm going to, on the long side, on the 9 and 3 quarter inch side, I'm going to move my trimming blade out of the way and we're just going to score this at four and one eighth of an inch. Four and three quarters of an inch. Eight and seven eighths of an inch. And nine and a half inches. All these measurements will be over on my blog and a link will be down below. So you don't need to sit there scribbling down all these measurements if you don't want to. You can just head on over to the blog post and they'll all be there for you. I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to score this then on the short side at half an inch. So I always do this on this side. Half an inch. Just because I find that much easier than trying to line it all up on this side. Then I spin it round and score it at one and one eighth of an inch. And eight and a half inches all the way up the other end. So that's one piece of card. That's the form our main box. Then I've got two little pieces of card. These are going to make the easel. One is slightly uh, longer and thinner than the other, and that one is 8 inches by 4 inches, the longer one, 8 by 4. I'm going to score that then at 3 and 5 eighths of an inch, 3 and 5 eighths, 7 and 3 eighths. So it's got a middle score line and an end score line. And then this piece here, we're going to leave it flat. No scoring. So that's four and one eighth of an inch by seven and three eighths of an inch. And I'll show you what we do with all those in a minute. So that's all the scoring that we're going to be doing. I'm going to go back to my box piece here. Fold and burnish all of these score lines. one on the edge is quite hard to do. I just start in the middle, start teasing it out and then run my band folder down. So this is pear pizzazz cardstock that I've used. On the main um, one that I showed you a minute ago I had used gorgeous grape. I uh, know I hadn't. I had used a uh, pale papaya cardstock. This peachy coloured cardstock which is beautiful. Um, I would use pear pizzazz as the mats, so I've just switched it up. I'm going to use pear pizzazz for the main body and pale papaya for the mats. So that's all the score lines are now burnished. Grab my paper snips, and I'm working here with this side that's got one score line. Okay, they've got one line that's one side that's got one score line and one side that's got two. On the one that's got one score line, I just want to snip away, and you can notch as well, that tiny little rectangle. That's useless, we don't want that. And then you can notch the 
habe. Ja. Ähm, das kommt hier nicht so. Und dann on this side. We're going to take away this rectangle. On the side there. And then cut up to the second score line. On both of these. We're going to take away this flap here. So we're going to cut away the whole lot. We're also going to cut away the second rectangle on both of these tabs. So let's start with the second rectangle, I think. Let's do these both of those. And then if you want to, you can make those empty tabs there as well. And however you find this easier, some people find this easier on the trimmer. We do want a fairly straight line because this is going to be visible. Some people use bigger scissors. I'm being brave and I'm just going to do it. Okay. Now to form the box, <coughs> this is your tab, excuse me. <clears throat> it's really really small um, so I've, rather than using a tape I'm just using a wet glue I'm just putting a little bit of wet glue all the way down the side here on this tab the Tombow glue is really strong and it does need a strong tape the other tape you could use is a, a red liner tape so we've got some of that in a, in a small width and then if you bring this side over and fold that flat down there and just keep holding and press until that's pressed down okay so that where the join there is the back of the box this is going to be your closure where you slide your chocolate in well we kind of need these notched a little bit and that might not have notched that one just enough towards the end. Just need to be able to get that in there, isn't it? We want a fairly tight closure so that it stays closed. And you can see what I mean about this raw edge here. And then this end here is the end that we're going to actually close. So fold the two tabs in. Choose which is your back, and that's the back for me because that's where my raw edge is. Pop some glue along here. Make sure it's all nice and square. And then fold that closed. Sometimes when you're crafting, you feel like you need another pair of hands, don't you? Do this, fair person. Once that's bonded and dry, that is your box. And on top of that is what we're going to build our easel card. So with the back, that raw edge there, and that raw edge there, laying down, that's the way up that we want this box. Now I've got this piece of card. The one with the two score lines in. So fold and burnish both of those score lines. I've managed to just bend that corner of my box ever so slightly. What we need to try and do is this little flap needs to tuck inside. And it's why this piece of card is slightly narrower than the whole easel. Okay, so we're going to put some glue on this side then that's going to slip into the box and then the easel will stand up like that. 
I've popped some glue on. You can use tape if you want to. This, this flap is bigger. And then slide that in. Line it up to the middle and to the score line. And then just hold that in place. And then that will sit over the top like that. And this one should still close. Just need to make this a bit easier for myself to close. You'll obviously take a lot more time when you're cutting than I did. Just take a slither out. easier there we go but you don't want to take too much slithers out because you want it to still close so it's a fine line as with everything in crafting okay so that's your box and then on top of this is going to sit our easel topper just feel like it wants a bit of a crease really a bit more bone foldering Get my finger in there. It's all going to be covered up anyway, that top edge. I'll give that a bit more of a crease and help it lay flat. So, and the weight will as well when you've got all your decoration on the top of here. So, just put some glue on the bottom half of this panel. Don't glue the whole plant panel down, so, no glue up here. Just put glue on this bottom half. Otherwise, what you'll find is that your panel won't it won't lift up like an easel. Now, this piece here wants to line up. However, this is laying. You see, mine's not laying quite evenly. I've got more of a border here than I have over here. That doesn't matter, not at all. But this does matter. Don't line this up with your with this piece. Line this up with what's underneath. So I'm lining it up with the main body of the box because that's what your recipient is going to see the workings underneath really doesn't matter because you're not going to see them and there is your easel box card and now just to decorate so what i've got is um, a couple of panels and mats this is um, the pale papaya. These are 3 and 15 sixteenths by 7 and 3 sixteenths. If you don't use the sixteenths of an inch, just grab your ruler and make yourself your own mats, however you want them. Okay, so I've gone for 3 and 15 sixteenths by 7 and 3 sixteenths. Again, all the measurements over on the blog. And I've got two layers of designer series paper. This is the Soup of the Peach designer series paper. Isn't that pretty? You can go whichever side you want, but I'm going to stick with the same design as I've got on this one. That one there with that paper on the front, and that's got the paper underneath. Okay, and this is three and three quarter inches by seven inches. And then all we're going to do is layer the paper onto the mats. a nice border. Um, if I'm working in centimetres I normally use a half a centimetre border and a half a centimetre is roughly three sixteenths of an inch. Um, a quarter of an inch is just a little bit too big a border but it would work fine if you don't like your mini measurements. that down on there. And then these can go on top. So like I say, you're going to be putting some weight on here, so all this weight will help if you haven't got the best of creases like me underneath there. It doesn't matter too much. The weight of the stamp out. Okay, 
Okay, so that one's going to stick on there like that. Every time I press down, my box goes to open, but that's okay. So I'll just push that close again. So then you can flip that up and then pop the dotty one. bottom here. Now I'm not going to decorate this all on video, I didn't want this video to be too long, um, but I will run you through what I have done and show you the stamps um, and the dies that I have used. Like I said, there will be more pictures and everything over on my blog post as well. But I will show you just how to make an easel stand up and all you need to do, this is one of the offcuts of card because the pale papaya mats I cut from a sheet of A4 and that was just what I was left over with which is the same width as this here and that's perfect, that's what we want and we just need to create this little stand up here so all you're going to do is cut this down to whatever width you want and then you raise it up on dimensionals pop it halfway across and then that gives you your stand for your easel card to be propped up against I love the Stampin' Up Dimensionals because they're just the right height, they're not too thick because you want your project to lay flat as well, but they just give you enough height and then that's all you would do, just pop that up on a couple of dimensionals and then that would sit up like that. So how have I decorated this box? So the top here, I've used a panel um, of um, grip, um, pale papaya cardstock and white cardstock. And then I've used the basic borders dies to create a kind of flag underneath. I like the fact that you've still got a small border of the design of the paper all the way around. This is the sweep of a peach stamp set. Which is this one with the beautiful leaves and the gorgeous flowers and the peaches which sit on top of these leaves. Maybe I should show you, I might do another video for actually using the stamp set, this is just to show you how to make the box really. And then I've done one as well and die cut it with the gorgeous dies that you find in the, in the die set. But I love the sentiments in here, so you've got thanks for being as sweet as a peach and um, it's your day, let's celebrate you to a sweet friend. So lovely photopolymer photo stamp set, that one. And then... This banner here just has thanks so much and then I've used some of the little ones, look, you get these cute little flowers and leaves and that's made a really nice decoration just either side of my banner and then I've got the peach, the big peach, um, which I've stamped in pale papaya ink and then just taken a little bit of um, calypso coral with my, um, lens, with my sponge and just sponged a little bit of ink on there to give it a two-toned effect. And then die cut those out as well. I don't know if I've got the dies to hand. If I can find them, I will show you. They are a pretty, it's a lovely set. It's just a bit unusual. Here we go, so here's the dies. And that really is as simple as that. I've left it quite straightforward, the decoration. So you get all these tiny little flowers and leaves, a branch, which I've not really used yet. All I've used is this one here that cuts out this stamp. The flowers, the peaches cut out the peaches. And the big peach and the big leaf. So that's a really, really nice set. And that's in the new Stampin' Up! annual catalogue which is available to purchase from now. Um, it's been a, it's an exciting kind of couple of weeks since the catalogue went live. Um, if you don't have a catalogue and you would like one, then please do get in touch. This is the new catalogue here, annual catalogue. So if you don't have one and you'd like one, then you can just ask me for one. This is the Sweet as a Peach Sweet that I've used here today. So look at all these gorgeous fun summery products page 61 of this catalogue. So the bundle, really really good value actually, that whole bundle, £34 for all those dies and stamps, I think that's cracking value. 
and a beautiful stamp set there. So even if you didn't want to get the dies, you can just get the stamps. And I've got lots of projects this week to show you. They'll be coming up your way. Um, so keep your eyes peeled um, for some more peachy products, is what I'll say. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've got any questions, please do get in touch. If you'd like to know more about how I decorated it, then visit my blog page, my blog post. That's down in the description below. Um, and I'll be back with you again very shortly for some more tutorials. Thanks for joining me. Take care, look after yourselves, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.